My name is John Barker, AKA your grandma's favorite pit master, AKA the ivory prince of the pit. You wanted us to get wild? Well, today we're gonna break out our finest spare ribs and we are gonna make peanut butter and jelly spare ribs. Let's get it. All right, guys, this recipe is actually very, very simple, okay? We're just gonna do some of the basics really right, and then we're gonna get wild at the end. This, my friend, is a pre-trimmed St. Louis spare ribs rack. I actually, for the most part, I like how this looks. I'm just cooking it here. I'm not gonna put it up for sale or anything, so I'm just gonna leave it how it is. It's mostly trimmed, however, on the back, we gotta grab this little meat flap, all right? Guys, seriously, it's not middle school. Don't be perverts, all right? We're gonna grab our now strong paring knife here. Link down below, those links do help us. That being said, I just really don't use this knife like I thought I would and uh, I've spent money on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and use it here to trim away this little hangy part, okay? A lot of times that part just gets over crisp and overdone anyway. So let's just get rid of the garbage. Now, you guys have the, uh, well, you know what? Today, I'm gonna pull the membrane. I don't normally, ah, no, you know what? I'm not going to. I don't normally pull the membrane. I'm not gonna do it to impress you guys, all right? I don't mind the membrane. You can certainly cut it if you want to. I've heard all the arguments. I've cooked it both ways. I think that if I just score it like so, I usually get the same quality. And I kind of like how it holds the ribs together and I don't really mind the, the snap per se. If you don't like it, take it off, dude. It's your ribs. Do whatever you want, okay? There's no right or wrong way to cook most anything. That's a lie. There are definitely right and wrong ways, but there's no real rules to cooking. So don't be bullied, all right? Do your damn thing. Now, the setup for this is super easy. I'm gonna grab this Skull & Mortar Original Rub, available at skullandmortar.com where you can also get your resurrected dead hoodies. And it's simple, guys. We're just gonna do the basics. We're gonna coat this, get a nice, thick coating of rub. You can use a binder if you want, mustard, hot sauce, whatever you want. Me, uh, I find typically that I don't need to do a whole lot of binder because the um, salt in the rub normally pulls out enough moisture to hold it. So uh, I'm not gonna worry about it too much but I am going to make sure that I get a nice, even coating. I want the edges coated. I want the front coated. I want the back coated. I want everything coated in this rub. This rub is literally like magic. It just makes everything better. You can put it in vegetables. You can put it in, uh, you know, meats, obviously. You can put it, uh, I don't know, put it on your girlfriend. Give her a kiss, your boyfriend, whatever. See how it tastes. It's up to you, really. The sky's the limit. Your imagination is the only thing limiting you when it comes to this rub. Guys, that's all the pre-prep we have to do here. Now, it's best if you could let it sit for a couple hours with the rub on it and kind of give it time to get through. I waited till the last minute and I'm really in a hurry. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw them on. I got my smoker with some peach wood, my Gravity 980 from Char Griller. I got it up to 250 degrees and we're gonna throw this directly on that bottom rack and let it get to work. Guys, our ribs are exactly where we want them to be. If we wanted to, we could just bend that and bust it right open. You can see we got bones coming out, that's good. This is perfect time to wrap this. Now, it's important at this point that we add some more fat into the wrap. So we're gonna add some butter. You see, I got some on the bottom, I got some on the top. Normally, uh, when I do my ribs, as you'd see in, if you've watched some of my past videos, uh, this is where I would put some extra flavor, like some brown sugar, uh, some honey, things like that. We're not gonna do that on this one because I don't wanna over sweeten it because I think that this glaze is gonna be really, really sweet. So at this point, we're just gonna wrap this as tight as possible. You wanna keep the moisture from that fat in.
try to keep everything tight. You see here, I busted a hole. So I'm just gonna put another layer of foil around here. You can't really have too much foil. So again, we're gonna wrap this again. This time, we'll kind of do it in the reverse order. Guys, yeah, so we're gonna get these back on the smoker. We're gonna check them in about an hour, and then we are going to see if it's time to glaze them or not. It could be an hour, it could be an hour and a half, it could be two hours, we'll find out. Get them back on the smoker. Uh, we're gonna keep the temperature at 250 degrees. It's been two hours. All right, guys, when I was at the grocery, I wanted to go with uh, peach preserves, but I couldn't find any. Uh, so we're gonna use apricot since it's uh, in the same vein. Uh, it'll go well with that uh, peach wood, obviously. We're gonna drop a bunch in here. We're gonna get our peanut butter and jelly glaze ready. You can go as much or as little as you like. Do not hesitate to get wild, guys. I don't know for sure what happens if you do more uh, of one than the other, but I can't imagine that it really is gonna taste bad. I got crunchy peanut butter because that's what I like, and uh, I might have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich later. Get a good amount of peanut butter in there. And then I'm just gonna kind of whip these together and see, I want this to be as well mixed and smooth as possible. Look at that. I think we're definitely gonna need some more. I think I just wanna start off by putting in some more jelly. Preserves, if you will. Hmm. Let's really get in and handle that peanut butter, much like Terry's mom. You didn't think we were gonna get through a whole day without a Terry's mom joke as the refrigerator kicks in and makes an appearance. I want more jelly, dude. I might just use this whole jar. All right, I feel like that is probably pretty satisfactory. Now, uh, I'm gonna actually just cover this and leave it out. I'm gonna let it sit because I want it to come up to temperature. The warmer it is, the easier it's gonna be uh, to work with. Guys, these ribs are exactly where we want them. It took about an hour and a half to get them there. Look at that, beautiful. A little bit of butter paper on there. Do a good job of taking care of your business, folks. We got a nice bone pullback here. Uh, each one of these bones I could twist right out if I wanted to. So these bad boys are done. What we're gonna do is we're gonna flip them over. Oh, look at that bone coming right out. I don't know why I put that in my mouth, but it seemed like a good thing to do. I've been hanging out with Terry too much. All right guys, so what we're gonna do now, we're just gonna take some of our peanut butter and jelly mixture, slather it right the hell on there. Then I'm gonna come back with my brush and just try to spread that out a little bit. Just get that good spread going, try to cover the bones aside. And flip it over. And we're gonna do the same, but we are going to layer it a bit thicker on this side, on the meat side. The only person who lays it thick on the bone is who? Yep, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you already know who. Now let's just kind of move that around a little bit, spread it out. I don't know, this could be a horrible idea. We're about to learn today, guys. Look at that. Tell me that does not look interesting. I'm not gonna say delicious. I don't know yet, guys. This could be a, a bad idea, it could be a great idea. Look at that, get it on there, guys. And now you know what we do? Real simple, we put this back on the smoker, we keep it at 250 degrees. It's gonna take about 30 minutes or so. No foil, nothing, just straight on the grates. Let's get it. Guys, here we are, the end result. Now, I really had kind of hoped that this would glaze up more, uh, but I think with the peanut butter, it's just not gonna happen. Um, you can see that the jelly has really kind of firmed up and stuff, but the peanut butter is still doing its thing. So we're gonna go ahead and cut into these. I'm not really sure the best way to go about this to make as little mess as possible, because these bad boys are going to be messy as hell. There's only really one thing left to do, right? We gotta taste them. I mean, look at that, it looks delicious. The inside, look at that. All right, man, 
Here goes nothing. All right, here we go. Wow. Um, that's uh, weirdly good. I almost want to say if we slam some jalapenos on here, like some of those fresh boys, it would work really, really well with the apricot and the peanut butter. Guys, these are not, these are pretty good. I'm surprised by this. Oh, there you have it, guys. That is how you make peanut butter and jelly spare ribs. Somehow that turned out amazing. I am very, very happy with this. I can try it, dude. If you learned something today, if you thought the video was cool, hit that like button, hit that subscribe, leave me a comment below, some crazy things you'd like to see me try, and we'll get wild as hell. My friends, just check out skullandmortar.com. That's how we pay the bills, get some sauce, get some rubs, we'll send it out to you. And until next time, namaste friends. No, I really, I really can't believe how good that was. I'm very surprised. I didn't expect it, yeah, it's very good.